Okay, well, welcome to this week's webinar of learning how to work the mind and the heart together, everyone. So how's everyone feeling today? <clears throat> Gail, a lot of processing. Chris, good and ready. Awesome, Chris. Always good to be ready. You did very emotional. Sounds like, that sounds like everyone's been through the ringer a bit then. Aiden's feeling motivated and Judith's feeling happy as well. Okay, so now without further ado, let's get into today's webinar. <clears throat> now type a Y in the text chat if you've had difficulties with escaping your mind and entering your heart. And if the two have been at war with each other. Gail has, Judith has. Yep, so a couple of you. So, I mean, quite a few. Yeah, I mean, whereas for me, it's kind of funny. Uh, I have like the opposite problem. I mean, so I, sometimes I'm too airheaded that I, that I need to leave the heart and get into the fucking mind to get shit done and all. So I guess there are, there are like two sides of the spectrum here when going into extremes with the mind and the heart. Because ultimately, both because both of them are here for a purpose. And you can't shut one off and then just only be in one of them because otherwise you get those problems. Like if you're too much in the head, then you'll be, you'll be intellectual. You only go by logic and reasoning and you'll forget to enter the heart and, and there'll be that disconnect from the higher cosmos. Whereas if you're too much in the heart, not enough and not, and not enough mind, then you'll be, you'll be very much up here, up in the air, like hola, holy da kind of thing. And then you won't be able to get shit done. And then you'll basically just be stuck there. And uh, you'll, and you'll pretty much not be able to formulate things into words and all kinds of shit like that. So it's very important that we learn how to work the two together rather than have them be at war. And, uh, and really, I mean, uh, the way that you can do that is by using them for their intended purposes. So the mind, um, for example, is great for day-to-day -day tasks and getting shit done. It's great. And it's great for like moving things at a fast pace because that's what the mind is at its core is it's, it's fucking fast. It's monkey mind as we, as we would all know, whereas the heart space, it's all about feeling. It's about love. It's about connection. So then the heart, the heart's purpose can, it would be around healing around love, around being open, around letting people in <clears throat> and letting the higher councils in. It's that, that kind of thing. And I mean, ultimately, ultimately the bit, the biggest issue that people have is that they're not dealing with their shit. I mean, type a Y in the text chat. If, if you know that most people are fuckwits and they'll refuse to just deal with their shit. They'd rather wallow in it and in their self pity and then rather than actually do something about it. So type away if you know someone like that or if you agree with that statement. So Chris and Gail, you did it. Yep. And Christine and I can also, and I also know quite a few people like that. Because I mean, as we all know, there's a solution to every problem. So um, when it comes to traumas, when it comes to stuff that's happened to us, I mean, everyone has had trauma to some degree, some worse than others, some better off than others. But ultimately, the one thing that's all the same is that you can fix that. And it's really, it's up to you to, to it's up to you to grow a sack and actually get up and fix that fucking problem. Because I mean, some would have trauma in the mind, in the throat, some in the shoulders some, and some in the heart and the mind and heart are especially very common ones because there's heartbreak or there's like being stuck in here um there's and it's being under a lot of stress and having this having migraines and just stuff like that so so really i mean uh, the best way to actually get your mind and heart working together is by first you really deal with your shit and deal with what's going on inside and you allow yourself to feel and acknowledge it and then once you felt it all 
you then you then look at the action steps to find the solution to that problem and rather than placing a band-aid on it because that's also how we end up engaging in excessive behavior and this is how people fall into addictions because i mean the addictions really are only a short-term relief slapping a band-aid on it so it may give you a relief and a breath for a while but then once that breath is gone, the pain is going to be back and it'll be like likely even worse than previously. And so, and so by taking the hard steps and actually feeling it and acknowledging it being raw, being vulnerable, and then finding the solutions and doing every, whatever it takes to fix it, you'll, you'll be amazed at the results and you'll actually be amazed by how quick you can actually fix it. Because I mean, how fast it happens all depends on how willing you are and how committed you are to actually dealing with that problem and how and to make sure you don't fall into addictions and that you stay balanced and that you stay away from excessive behavior because extreme or excessive behavior it never ends well as we all know because we've all engaged in excess in excess at some point in our lives and I mean, even, even the mind, like the, another important factor to this is knowing the subconscious and the conscious mind. So type a Y in the text chat, if you guys know about the subconscious and the conscious mind, or you have some kind of idea about it. <clears throat> yes. So quite a few of you, and you'll, you definitely would, if you've been on this journey for quite a while, because when it comes to the mind, and the subconscious and the conscious mind well the way it works is this so think of it like an iceberg so the conscious mind is like the tip of the iceberg and then the subconscious is like everything else that's underneath so that means that your conscious mind is that is that your conscious mind and what you're actively feeding into your into yourself and then the subconscious mind is only a servant to the conscious mind so whatever you're telling your subconscious mind is going to manifest directly into your life. Now that can either be a scary thought or it can be an exciting thought because I mean, <clears throat> when it can't, the trouble is most people are just always talking badly about themselves or other people. And most people are de don't think that much of themselves. So, I mean, even for example, when they think, oh no, there's no way I could, there's no way I could do that. I'm completely hopeless. Oh, I'm very, I'm very bad at this thing. I'm very bad I'm not, and I don't want to fix it. And the trouble is when you, with well, the moment you say that you're basically putting a spell or like a curse upon yourself. Cause my mother, Grace, who's here, she always told me that, that words are life or death. Now it's, it's, it's good. It, it sounds, now it could sound like something out on, on an inspirational poster or whatnot. But the more, the more you, that you read into it, the more you realize how true it is because our words have much more power and meaning than we realize. And this is why we have that ability to actually shift, to change and actually change our lives and help our mind and hearts to work together. So we have that power within us to do that. So, so, cause I can, I can guide you, me and other people can guide you to do it. But ultimately it's up to you to actually put in the hard work and the hard steps to actually make it happen. And, of, and the most important thing, like I mentioned is using them for their intended purposes. So the mind for getting shit done and day to day tasks, and then the heart for, for like love, for connection, for healing, for stuff like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to get you to do is just type in the text chat. So have you been, have you been too much in your mind or too much in your heart? So type mind or heart, whichever one you've been too much in lately or throughout your life. Steve says mind. So I already said mine earlier, which is I've been too much in the heart before. And too airheaded. Gail says heart, Anu says heart, Chris, mind through life, heart more recently. Okay, so we've got a good mix here. You did mind mostly, but finding my heart these days. Christine, mind previously.
Yes, and the mind I find is very common, especially because <clears throat> well, when it comes to the dark, they want people to be disconnected from their hearts. Because, I mean, by, dis by people being disconnected from their heart and being in their mind, it just makes it, it makes them one of those typical, it, it can make them into those typical, annoying, intellectual, academic type of fuckwits who will only go by logic and reasoning. And I mean, and the, the intellectuals, as we've seen, are a big part of why the, the world is in this shit. Like with, like with the digital mandates and with everything that goes on. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll now bring up the code. Okay, so is there any questions or comments before we get into the clearing? Okay, so no questions or comments. Okay, so now what we'll do is do a clearing around the mind and the heart to bring them together. So everyone focus on this code and inhale it to your mind and your heart and just imagine it in those places. And no, sorry, I missed first part, how to connect mind and heart. So, okay, so in order to connect to your mind and heart, I mean, it needs to be a fine balance. You can't be too much in one. So you need, you need to make sure you use them for their intended purposes. So when you're doing day-to-day -day tasks and when you're getting shit done, you'll, you need to be in your mind. Whereas when you're connecting to like the higher councils or if you're, or if you're doing healing work and, and going beyond the physical world, you need, the mind needs to be quiet and you need to be in the heart. So it's about really balancing those two and allowing yourself and also dealing with shit because if you don't deal with your traumas and the other gunk that's going on, then it's going to be really hard. And you'll all, and you'll always fluctuate between being too much in one. So there's all, so there's a few that comes to that. You need to deal with your trauma and your other shit first, and then you need to in, use the mind and the heart for their intended purposes and have the two to work together instead of being at war with each other. So anyway, I hope that helps Anu. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so now we'll get into this clearing. So like, so just inhale the code, like I mentioned, to your heart and to your mind. Just imagine it there and close your eyes. Now just start taking some deep breaths and relax your mind. We now call upon the divine protection and the bright white pyramid surrounding me and each person here. We call upon the five archangels, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael, Michael, and Metatron, and Christ and Mother Mary. So only those who are aligned with the word of God and the Christ consciousness. And we clear and repel any false spirit guides, negative energies, outside interferences, or anything else related now.
It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that this energy clearing code be used to clear any blockages, imprints and self-sabotage from each person here or any attachments <coughs> around their mind and their heart and from working together. So we clear any negative thoughts, voices or doubts from the mind and clear any chaos, erraticness or clutter or chatter going on in there and help it to calm down and to speed up during day-to-day -day tasks and, and when it's used for its, its intended purpose. When we clear any issues of life from the heart and any heartbreaks that's happened and any pains or emotions and bring healing to the heart of each person here and clear any hardness and soften it and help them to use that for healing and use that for connecting to the higher councils, connecting with other people and for its intended purpose and help the two to balance out together to work as one now to Asia in today. And clear any dark energies or negative energies around there and evaporate them with the golden liquid light. And clear any tension and tightness around this as well and help them to loosen up and to breathe. So this is the other factor everyone as well is to learn how to learn to breathe. Because without meaning to, too many people they forget to breathe, especially when they work and they get, and when you forget to breathe, it gets you tense and wound up and it disconnects you from yourself and ultimately from your mind and your heart. So it's important that you learn to just take deep breaths and to keep breathing. We now re-energize each person here, replenish them and bring back their vital force energy. And clear any other emotional charges going on and bring them all into balance and pour in the golden liquid light and send in the love from the higher mother and father. Okay, so, so how's everyone feeling after that clearing? <clears throat> Steve Leiter, again, we got Gail, felt a stabbing pain in the side of head and then it went. Wow, that's awesome, Gail. It sounds like something was really released there. A new Leiter, Aiden a lot less tense. Excellent, Aiden. <clears throat> Chris, like a white, a fluffy white cloud floating around. 
yeah, that's always fun, isn't it? You, to, I feel, I feel strong in the heart. Oh, the warrior woman is awakening. Yep, that's it, Judith. Time to bring out that Wonder Woman now. Christine, pressure around my third eye. Wow, so that's great, Christine. Sounds like your third eye was really activating around your purpose and your awareness then. Okay, so now everyone just take a glass of water just to integrate that clearing. Okay, so any final questions or comments before we end for today? Christine, no questions. Thanks, William, Gail, all good. Thank you. Judith, no questions. Thank you, William. Steve, is the image copyrighted or can be supplied to others? Uh, yeah, absolutely, Steve. I mean, uh, as you know, with the code, I mean, uh, you've got access to it in Dropbox, so you can access it if you need. And Anu, thank you so much. Yep, Steve, thanks, will do. And I mean, uh, and the fact it's on YouTube too, I mean, uh, pretty much anyone can like, can see it anyway, if you know what I mean. But yeah, with that, I'd need to double check. But yeah, so thanks everyone. Another great webinar and uh, another great clearing. And make sure you drink plenty of water and get a good sleep tonight. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.